got a hold of Plex Radio, I'm still having issues with the persistent data. One thing I was going to mention so far after getting the new radio, the only two issues that I saw that still linger are persistent data can still easily be blown away just by using it. Data, look at this. Data. What? My name. It is pronounced data. Oh? You called me data. <laughs> What's the difference? One is my name. The other is not. And it's been an issue for a while. And I really think it's a bug. And I spent hours recording details of how I can screw up through this data without transmitting. It's not RFI or anything like that screwing up the radio. It just gets, you can just screw it up. It doesn't take much. And uh, the touch screen. But uh, a quick, my quick tip video explains how you can get around the touch screen and then it's fine. And I think that's actually a Windows issue with the touch screen uh, for the on-screen keyboard. So I'm not too concerned about that. The the band selector is getting messed up and the persistent data is annoying, but how can I say it? I hate, I hate that that happens, but the radio is so amazing compared to not as far as what you can receive. We've already covered that. It's, it's fine. It's, I'm sure it's a good radio. If you have really good conditions, you can probably notice the difference between it and other radios but in a high noise environment, you're not going to gain a lot. Um, the RFI suppressors I installed actually made a remarkable difference, uh, and that was because of them, not because of the radio. So again, that goes back to what I mentioned before, is you're still going to want something like, if you got really bad noise, you're still probably going to find yourself with a magnetic receive loop, you're still probably going to find yourself with a rotator on that, you're probably going to find yourself getting an MFJ noise canceller, maybe work uh, doing a loop on the ground, other things to combat noise that are actually a lot more effective and cheaper than a very expensive flex radio. So, if you're dealing with noise, don't just run out and buy a Flex or the 7610 or from ICOM or the new Yesu, whatever. It doesn't matter. You need to deal with noise a different way. Uh, and I've actually, since putting on the noise suppressors, the RFI noise suppressors, and the uh, going, you know, one of the steps I did was just by going with a doublet that's tuned. It's, I go from, I can, I can do everything from 160 to 6 meters, even though that 993B tuner is not rated for 6 meters, I can even tune 6 meters on it. It's a little flaky, but it, it does it. And uh, honestly, if, if it doesn't, I can just use the tuner on the uh, radio for my 6 meters. Um, the radio has got a tuner on it. So, I, I can get six meters too, and I've actually heard people on six meters since I put the RFI suppressors on. I've, I've actually made contacts all the way through, from six all the way down to 160, even right now, every single band, it's FT8. Um, but I've done voice contacts on, on some of the bands, but on all the bands I've done FT8, and I think that's a huge progress. Radio was not a contributing factor to that. It was everything else you saw me do after I got this radio and said, well, obviously the radio is not going to fix it. I need to make other changes. So start with the other changes first. If you like to tinker, if you have a good understanding of computers, I don't necessarily like to tinker. I work on computers all the time. I don't want to have to fix a computer for my hobby. but. The UI on the Flex, everything about all of that makes the little quirky glitches worth it. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, it was frustrating at first, now I've just learned to live with it. The band selector persistent data thing's kind of annoying, but 
just don't use it. Just forget about persistent data. Just assume it's defective and until they fix it, it's defective. So it's probably not gonna make you happy. Don't worry about it. Um, it's just, just don't do it. You can put memories in of bands you wanna go to. Uh, if you're using your computer, um, you can put memories on whatever software you're using. FT8, uh, all those things, JS8 call, they automatically have a band selector anyway on them. So just don't use it, just give up on it. So that's kind of what I did, um, kind of a shame. But like I said, he is going to format this card for me today. I also don't think it's going to make any difference. But this is an opportunity for me to look inside the radio without voiding warranty because they're going to give me permission to pull the card out, put the SD card reader in. He's going to reformat it and re-image it. And I would like to actually see the card they use. Supposedly it's this really high quality card. All right, so the other day I wasn't able to get my USB SD card reader to show up on my Windows VM for whatever reason, so he wasn't able to burn a fresh image for me. But I went ahead and just did an experiment. I had one laying around. It's 100 megabytes per second write time. The one that comes with the Flex is a class 10 uh, UHD or UHS class one. It's basically, I looked it up on the manufacturer's website, it's basically 10 megabytes per second. So if there's an issue with data being corrupted because when you're moving around a lot and it just can't keep up or whatever, I figured I'm gonna experiment. And so I went ahead and made a, using DD and on the Mac, from the command prompt, I made an image of the factory SD card, and then I wrote that image to my uh, 128 gig, 100 megabyte per second micro SD card. So I'm running on the, just a uh, Kingston I think is in there for the SD card. And I got the original one out right here that I just made a copy of, basically. And now, right now, running on the image. And I'm gonna run on this card for a while. And just see how the radio does.